Evening Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblum, and you're watching the Theo Nightly video for the 5th of October here in 2021. And we still have this Will It Want It? Will it break and trade to lower support levels? This is the S&P Futures. That's the downside target. That's your daily chart. On the weekly, we have similar logic. Busting support, shattering support, falling under these levels. That's about 4300, 4250. That's going to open a drop zone similar to what we see earlier in the year. And that's playing toward about 4,100. So those are downside targets on additional sell side activity. Today is either a speed bump on the way down or the beginning of something a little more significant. So we'll be looking at the odds for either of those and that's how we'll plan short-term trades. The videos here in TheoTrade are meant for the next few sessions and the trades working right now. So given the markets under support, we're going to look at the S&P. Same logic will take place in the tradable spiders, which is right here. That's an ETF. That's your S&P 500 spiders, SPY, tradable, optionable, and good for short-term swing trades. And the key levels for it are breaking support 428. That's going to open a path to about 415. And of course, the SPX itself. But the NASDAQ is almost already there. So breaking of support sends the market to the downside. And that is where we are holding off on the NASDAQ at 14 and 500, 14,500. Similar to other examples where we had the break and a little bit larger sell swing. The market's under distribution, the market's under sell side activity. And I, I dare say that is a little overdone, but good to be seeing that take place on a stable pullback, not necessarily a crash or crush to the downside, but a stair step to the downside. And that's giving rise to those put or hedge or defensive positions. On the Dow, we've seen it trade more sideways. And that again is down to that 200 simple average. The S&P has been a little bit stronger. The NASDAQ, not as much in a large part because XLK or the monsters of tech, stocks like Facebook and Google and Apple, Amazon, the like, they have been weaker. We can take a look at some of those stocks. We might do that in a moment, but just to name a few of them, Facebook, remember the XLK is the sector for the technology group, and that plays directly into the NASDAQ or the QQQ for those who trade ETFs or options on ETFs. Facebook's a leading component, but we can see exactly what some of those components are. This is under our Market Watch tab, NASDAQ 100, and our Monsters of Tech are Microsoft, Google, Facebook, NVIDIA, Netflix are on the cusp of it, but not quite there. But Apple, Amazon, and Tesla are. So these are names we always watch closely as short-term intraday or swing type traders. Google has pulled back as well. There's Microsoft, which has similarly had a deeper pullback. And that's what we're watching for the NASDAQ. The Dow mini futures or the Dow Jones index is just the 30 stocks which make up the Dow. So not a lot going on there, but the Russell is the small cap and it remains important. And this is where we've been for months. The videos have focused on the support levels or these consolidation zones or a rectangle or a volatility box all the same concepts such that the Russell or the IWM for the ETF traders should be on the short side for trade setups into 2325, maybe as high as 2350. And the long side, the call side, the bounce side, the support side, just about that 2125, 2150. That's a look at the broader indices for the moment. In the backdrop, of the S&P trading to the downside and other indexes as well, we've seen crude oil be squeezed and that uptrend has continued. And again, we have the logic of the energy crisis. We have natural gas, not something you might see us trade a lot here in Theo trade, but is worth noting that natural gas as a commodity, which is on the futures grid here, caught a strong uptrend, strong bid, strong volume and that's on the buy side when it's green. And that's led this to new 52 week highs, which is one of the techniques that I use to find strong stocks getting stronger. And I share those in evening videos. 
So we'll discuss some of those, but natural gas is no different than something that is making higher highs, higher lows, and we'll call it continuing to squeeze to the upside. Now, if you want to trade ETFs, there's a little extra, extra paperwork and extra steps, but nonetheless, UNG will be something to watch or chart alongside natural gas. But it's an energy sector type rally or energy sector specific bullishness, and crude oil is part of that. And of course, energy stocks in general, which might include ConocoPhillips. These are individual stocks. If you don't want to play into ETFs, you can play the sector, and that sector is XLE. That is up in the resistance. That should be a caution spot there. Or individual names. And ConocoPhillips has been continuing this, not stable, but still uptrend. And it's a similar type of squeeze to what we saw earlier in the year. Other stocks would include Chevron Texaco, which is not perfect and not stellar, but nonetheless has gotten a squeeze, and the ever popular Exxon Mobil. I think these are more trading range, getting a bounce inside of a longer term consolidation, not a trend, similar to what we see in the IWM. And that's playing off in the energy sector. Gold continues this long term multi month chop. Neither a bull nor a bear trend is gold. It's just consolidating with wide gaps, wide volatility, and to me at least, not a lot of trading signals or confidence in those signals. So I don't have a lot to discuss in gold and no trades at all in my account, at least for GLD or gold. Not within this type of gap, volatility. It probably is best seen as a downtrend. Not really a good hedge against inflation. We don't look at it that way. But uh, nonetheless, not a lot of opportunities in gold. But the, the bond market, here's TLT. You can look at this as ZN, which is a 10-year treasury note. ZB, which is the 30-year bond, US government debt, or the tradable TLT. And that is seeing a down move. And at the same time, if we think of the other side, this is what Don is discussing and what we should be all focusing on carefully, whether or not we're trading the bond market or even looking frequently at the bond market. It's going to be important how the bonds, and for the moment, the yield, and that yield can be seen as T in X, and your screen's in, think or swim. So yields traded up to this, this is actually 1.7, 1.8. They're now into 1.5. So when you see a 10 on this chart, it means 1% and 2% on the 10-year treasury yield. Now that will factor down to other interest rates across the economy, mortgages and loans and anything else that is tied to government yields or the Fed funds rate or things that go up the yield curve, a rising yield. This could catch the attention of the market. It probably already has and is. But at the moment, that rising in yield concept is boosting financial stocks short term. But the entire market could be under some stress. Higher yields, in a big sense, if they occur very rapidly, are not necessarily good for the broader economy, for corporate profits and earnings, pricing across the board, that's inflation, and things like that. So for the broader stocks, broader sectors, it could boost the financials, but that is something we're going to be watching to the extent that TNX, Treasury yields, rise rapidly, which puts pressure on different sectors of the stock market. And that's the main play for the quick view here on the 5th of October, pushing into a brand new month. A quick note of stocks making new highs. We'll zoom this in. These are stocks in the S&P 500, just for a, or 100. For a quick note, we just saw, we can see Netflix, Bank of America, ConocoPhillips, we just saw that one, and AIG. Quick, quick, quick note of those. So again, the logic of something strong getting stronger, here is Bank of America, a new 52-week high. Netflix is a tech company. It's one of the only ones that are up there at the highs, at least on the big market cap name. That's Netflix. ConocoPhillips, we saw it be pushed up with a short squeeze or a rally via the energy sector, crude being strong, and of course, natural gas and other energy type plays. And that is a global concern or global impact, which is boosting up certain 
stocks. And finally, AIG is an insurance company or insurance financial group, which is an American international group, and is pushing up to new highs. Careful, caution, watch the treasury yields, watch the impact on higher rates rapidly, potentially putting additional pressure on the equity market. As always, be careful and safe. This is Corey Rosenblum with the Knights Theo video update for October 5th, 2021.